Looks like Jada Pinkett Smith is having an entanglement with Egyptian history. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, the beauty myth. Learn the beauty secrets of the goddess next door in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the beauty myth at online booksellers everywhere today. Jada Pinkett Smith has produced a new documentary series on the life of Queen Cleopatra. And this new documentary series that is supposed to be on Netflix has created a firestorm of controversy because Jada Pinkett Smith has decided to cast a black actress to portray Queen Cleopatra on her documentary series. Now, many Greeks and Egyptians and historians have created a petition to demand an end to the falsification of Queen Cleopatra's history to fit Jada Pinkett Smith's narratives that present Queen Cleopatra as black, and many more are demanding that this Queen Cleopatra miniseries be pulled from the Netflix platform. Now, this whole firestorm of controversy is based on Jada Pinkett going out here and again casting a black actress to portray Queen Cleopatra, even though historical documents clearly show that Queen Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh of Egypt, was not a black woman at all. No, she was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, descended from Ptolemy I, a Greek general who served under Alexander the Great, who had conquered Egypt, and after he conquered Egypt, he had installed his own individuals to reign over the once great nation of Egypt, which went into decline after the Hebrews exodus the nation and went back to form their own nation, Israel, and conquer their own land. So you have an individual like Jada Pinkett Smith looking to try to blackwash history as related to Queen Cleopatra in the hopes of creating a narrative of black empowerment, but her approach is just absolutely wrong because Yes, Egyptians were black at one time, but we have to go to the right period in history if we want to produce any sort of media, and you have to go to that period in history to show an accurate depiction of black people. Now, when I was out here doing my research for the ISIS series way back in 1998, I found that, yes, their Egyptians and Nubians were both black, and Egypt and Nubia were both like the United States and Canada at one time. Because at that time that people called Kemet and Cush, both of these nations were black, just like the Israelites were black, and these nations, again, they traded with each other, they worked with each other, and Yes, there were black pharaohs at one time, but Jada Pinkett Smith wants to run over to Cleopatra in order to create whatever narrative she wants. And what I find interesting is that she passes over Hatesput, the black fe first black female pharaoh, a story that easily could have been told by her. She could have easily told the story of Hatesput, the first black female pharaoh, but she didn't want to do that because, again, that didn't fit her narrative. No, what she wanted to do was go over to Cleopatra because Cleopatra was someone who basically mirrored her own personal life. Now, Hatesput, again, she became the queen and, and pharaoh of Egypt and wore a beard like the pharaohs but she was only looking to maintain the throne so that her son could inherit the throne. But Jada Pinkett doesn't want to tell the story of a test book, nor does she want to tell the story of other great black pharaohs like P.A., who was the one who was a part of the 25th dynasty and ruled Egypt and Nubia, which was Cush, brought both nations together as one, doesn't want to talk about P.A., doesn't want to talk about Taharka, a, a Kushite pharaoh at the, who, was a, who was a great um, uh, military tactician and had great roles in geopolitical politics, doesn't want to talk about Taharka, doesn't want to talk about Shabaka, doesn't want to talk about Tantahami, 
doesn't want to talk about any of the great black pharaohs, nor does she want to talk about any of the great black queens of that era. Again, I find it quite suspect that you're going over to Cleopatra, because going over to Cleopatra, this is more Doc Uganda. And again, Doc Uganda is when somebody goes out here and uses the documentary format of filmmaking in order to promote propaganda to people where they put these lies as the story and try to present it as the truth. And that's what this whole Jada Pinkett Smith documentary is looking like. It's looking like one big piece of Doc Uganda designed to make it look like Queen Cleopatra is a black woman when Queen Cleopatra was not a black woman. No, Queen Cleopatra was a Greek woman and she was a Greek woman who was out here looking to make Egypt another part of the Roman Empire because Queen Cleopatra was a was the last pharaoh because she was an incredibly weak woman who was just a placeholder was put in place to rule over Egypt so that the the that the people like the Greeks and the Romans could go out here and take the land and reap it for all of its resources because Egypt at the time had lots of wheat and dates and other and other resources and lots of gold and what the Greeks and the Romans wanted to do was go out here and take that land and conquer it and make it a part of the Roman Empire. And that's basically what Cleopatra was looking to do. She was looking to go out here and make all sorts of compromises with the Roman Empire. That's why the story of Anthony and Cleopatra was so famous because your sexually promiscuous Cleopatra was looking to go out here and looking to broker a deal where she could go out here and live on top and the Romans would be able to take whatever they wanted, but things didn't work out for Cleopatra who wound up wound up with the with her nation basically being taken over by the Roman Empire and the Roman Empire basically took Egypt and made it a subsidiary of the Roman Empire. Now, when I was doing my research for the Isis character back in 1998, this is what I found to be historically accurate as related to Queen Cleopatra, who was not, again, a black woman at the time, because what happened with the Egyptian Empire at that time is that eventually it had gotten occupied and conquered by the Greeks and as it got conquered and occupied by the Greeks what the Greeks did was again they wound up wiping out the original black line of lineage and wound up putting in their own um, placeholders in their place to maintain their political power so Queen Cleopatra was just again a token ruler she was not an original black ruler from the original black bloodline. No, that original black bloodline basically wound up getting um, taken over as this land got conquered. And again, this was just something that the people are not looking at as related to it, because again, by this time in history, Egypt had basically become a melting pot of different races. It had been become a melting pot of Greeks and Romans and, and other peoples. And again, most of the black people, they had either been killed out or they had fled to Nubia because Nubia was still a predominantly black nation and it was the stronger of the nations. And that's what I found in doing my research for the ISIS character back in 1998. And that's why the ISIS character is a Nubian because Nubians still had a strong nation Nubians still had strong pharaohs. Nubians still had a strong black culture. And that's why I made the Isis character a Nubian character, because at that point, Egypt had been conquered. And when I wrote the story, I wanted Osiris to go and look to find a, try to sire someone from Nubia, the sister nation, because Egypt had been conquered at that point. And what he wanted to do was create a sword of Nubia 
that would bring Egypt and Nubia back together the same way it was under P.A. the Kushite, who basically built a strong nation. And the point I wanted to make was it was going to be one nation under the gods. That was the, the whole point of the ISIS character's original destiny. But we see people like Jada Pinkett Smith looking to co-opt the entire narrative of Cleopatra and in hopes of Afrocentrizing it, not understanding the whole narrative of Cleopatra was all about colonization and white supremacy. Moreover, if you make Cleopatra black, all you're doing is promoting the idea that a black woman is a sellout. You're promoting the idea that a black woman will compromise with white supremacy. And again, this is all part of the Doc Uganda, which is again about overtly producing something that says it's pro-black passively, but aggressively is promoting anti-black racism because as you're watching this version of Cleopatra, you're seeing a black woman going out here and participating in things like swirling, participating in things like making compromises with white men, and also deifying and worshiping white men. That's the types of undertones of this Doc Uganda that most people won't be looking at because they're just caught up in their emotions about oh, it's a black Cleopatra, but there are undertones in the messages of this Doc Uganda that are anti-black, and these anti-black narratives are extremely dangerous because you'll have people going in and buying into the narratives, oh, Cleopatra was black. No, by the time Cleopatra came to power, she was just a figurehead who was just there to do the dirty work of the Greeks, and she was a Greek woman doing the dirty work of the Greeks in providing those resources first to the Greeks, then to the Roman Empire, which eventually conquered Egypt at that point. And she wants to tell us the story that Cleopatra was black, but the image that she's presenting of black women is a negative one because Cleopatra, the last pharaoh, was not a person who was about empowering the people of Egypt no, Cleopatra was a sellout who basically sold the nation of Egypt up a creek and hoped to try to profit for herself. And as she was looking to profit for herself, she was looking to get paid at the expense of her own people. And she was looking to control basically um, the, the, the resources that she would get for herself, the crumbs from the tables of the Roman Empire, but sadly, Queen Cleopatra wound up dying at, at the side, alongside Mark Anthony, who she was, if they're, according to Jada Pinkett's story, swirling with. Because, again, if you've got a black Cleopatra, she's swirling it up with Mark Anthony. And this whole story, again, is more Doc Uganda designed to push anti-black racism, making black Cleopatra the bad guy. So this whole story, again, is Jada Pinkett Smith trying to put her own narrative on the story of Queen Cleopatra talking about she's a black queen, but there was nothing about Queen Cleopatra that radiates any positivity as being a black queen, like the story of Queen Hatesput. The story of Queen Hatesput is a positive story of a black queen maintaining the throne for her son, it is a story of a black woman having the strength of character to go out here and lead. It is a story of a black woman going and standing up to maintain the black lineage of, a, of, of ancient Egypt. But we don't see Jada Pinkett Smith looking to finance this because she doesn't want to elevate black men because her whole hobby is entangling herself with black men that she can emasculate like August Alsina and Will Smith and now she's entangling herself into ancient history and her entangling herself into ancient history just shows me that she just needs to stay her ass act in, 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 in acting because she knows nothing about producing because for you to go out here and produce this doc Uganda shows that Jada Pinkett Smith has absolutely no ethics because a whole thing is is that anybody who has done research on ancient Egypt knows that by the time Cleopatra the seventh came around Egypt wasn't a black nation at that point no they had been conquered by that point by 
the by Alexander the Great, it was a completely different nation at that point, and it was a pale shadow of its former self, and it was a pale shadow of its former self because it wasn't the same nation that it was. And again, this is historical fact. And again, if you're going to do a documentary on a historical figure, you need to make sure that you do your research. You need to make sure that your history is accurate. You need to make sure that your details are on point because if you're doing research on historical figures, you need to make sure everything fits within a timeline. This is what I had to do when I was working on the on ISIS back in 1998 and 1999. I had to go to the library and do the research, and I had to do research on the historical figures at the time. And again, at that time, Egypt was not the same nation it was during the time of the pharaohs, which actually starts with Osiris, who is the first pharaoh, and goes all the way up into a certain point. I mean, all the pharaohs at one time were black. And again, Egypt and Nubia were both black nations at one time, but Jada Pinkett Smith glosses over all of the black pharaohs and the black pharaohs' wives like Isis and Hatesput, and wants to go and go cast a black woman in the role of a white woman, not understanding that your attempts to blackwash history are making you look like you're ignorant because again you're looking I'm looking at the history here and again you have Jada Pinkett Smith out here making a a historical figure something that she isn't to make her black not understanding when you make the character of Queen Cleopatra black what you do is you put you, you push narratives that are anti-black because again Queen Cleopatra was sexually promiscuous Queen Cleopatra was unethical. Queen Cleopatra made compromises with the one of the first institutions of white supremacy, the Roman Empire. And this does not reflect positively on black women. No, it doesn't reflect positively the way it would have if you did a Hatesput documentary. But a Hatesput documentary would not get you a lot of controversy as related to Netflix. No, it wouldn't get you any sort of heat but it just shows me how much of a sellout Jada Pinkett Smith is and how she just doesn't care about black people. No, it's all about her going out here pushing her own agenda. And again, when you push docugandas, docugandas are in and of themselves anti-black, whether they be the um, R surviving R. Kelly docuganda, which was about demonizing R. Kelly as a sexual predator, even though he is a sexual deviant, this the docuganda made him look like um, he was the ultimate evil of a black brute. The um, Bill Cosby documentary by Kamau Bell, which was designed to demonize Bill Cosby, or the upcoming Freaknik documentary, which was designed to demonize black male and female sexuality, more so black male sexuality than anything. The whole point of these docugandas is to, again, promote a, take a documentary subject and then slant the entire narrative of it to as demonize black people. And this is the latest weapon used by white supremacy to demonize black people and black history. And we have to be very vigilant as related to this misinformation because listening, watching docuganda can mess with your mind. Docugandas, they present you so-called facts in a documentary, but you don't know that everything you're watching is completely slanted and everything in that documentary is not about presenting you history. It's about presenting you somebody's propaganda ideas and about presenting you their propaganda ideas as fact. And again, you have to be very careful about where this docuganda is coming from and you have to look at the source, whether it be black or white, because whether it comes from a black bootlick like a W. Kamal Bell or a, or a Jada Pinkett Smith or white supremacist, it's still white supremacy. And again, this is the one that's the most egregious to me because you're taking the history of ancient Egypt, which was black, white, and then looking to pass over all of the black, great black kings and queens. And you're looking to pass over all of the great black kings and queens to go to the period where white supremacy took over. Again, if I wanted to do any sort of documentary, again, it would be on Hatesput, or it would be on one of the great black or Nubian queens, 
Again, women who never got their history told, but Jada Pinkett Smith wants to get in with Netflix and she wants to go out here and promote anti-black agendas. So that really, again, shows me what I was talking about, about sellouts in disguise. And Jada Pinkett Smith, with this whole documentary, is looking more like one of these other sellouts in disguise. Now, if you want to pick up some of my books that are based in ancient Egyptian mythology in the Isis series and the East Eam series, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can send a donation to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s with this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, 1987 at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, e Steam The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of e Steam The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today.